Acumatica is a cloud-based ERP system that offers a range of functionalities for businesses. One of its key features is the Bill of Materials module. The Bill of Materials, or BOM for short, give manufacturing and distribution companies the ability to manage their inventory and production processes more efficiently. In this demonstration, we will explore what a Bill of Materials is, how it works in Acumatica and its benefits to your business. The Bill of Materials is where we define all of our production needs and costs, for example, operations, machines and materials. What we create here is what we end up using in the production cycle or during manufacturing. These then become our planned costs and a template for our production. As with other areas of Acumatica, you will see that there is a Bill of Materials workspace and within that workspace you will find everything relating to your Bill of Materials. In this workspace I'm going to select the BOM list and we're going to see all of the Bill of Materials in the system at the moment. This list is showing me all of the active bombs. If you want to make a change on a bomb, then you have to put it on hold, make the changes and then reactivate it again. So to see bombs that may be being worked on, we just need to take the active checkbox off to see everything. You can see here that some of my bombs are finished goods and some of them are sub-assemblies that are produced as components that then go on to make up the finished goods. I'm going to select a finished goods bill from the list here. This is a finished item that we are creating. This bill of materials is to make a model 450 coffee machine and we can see the associated stock inventory ID here. So when it is built, it will go into stock with this ID. We can have multiple bills of material for a single finished item. This is useful if you maybe have different locations and you build the finished item a different way depending on the location. We can also use the revision control. So if we want to swap out a material or reconfigure the finished item, then we can simply create another revision. Or we can go through the full engineering change request process, which we will look at later on in this demonstration. In the center of the screen, we can see our operations. To put together this coffee machine, I need to go through these three steps, assembly, inspection, and then packaging. We can see against each of these operation lines how much time each one of these operations is going to take our resources to complete. Each of these operations gets tied to a work centre or a cost centre where the operation is occurring. This is usually a machine or an area on the production floor. If I drill into work centre 10 against this assembly operation, you'll see that we can set up the standard cost for this work centre, Shift information, so here if the work centre only runs on certain days or we have multiple resource shifts on the same work centre, we can define things like the crew size and in the calendar define the days and times that this centre is in operation. You can have one or multiple machines per work centre and we can do scheduling either at the work centre or at the machine level depending on how your business does the shop floor scheduling. You can also decide if you want Acumatica to use standard work centre rates or if you want to use the standard cost against the individual machines. On this basis for capacity drop down, you can define if the labour rate is going to be based on the machines or if it's going to be based on the crew size. So the number of people that are going to be working on this machine or cost centre. You can also see on the where used tab exactly which bombs use this work centre and the inventory ID of the item that it will ultimately produce. Finally, you can account for overhead at this work centre level. So in this example, we can see that some admin fixed overhead is going to be factored in every time we use this work centre. You can have different ways of calculating overhead as well as just fixed. If I drill into the admin overhead ID, you will see that I can use many different overhead calculation types. So for example, if I choose to use variable by quantity completed, this means that for each finished item that's completed, the system will take the cost rate multiplied by the factor to come out with the overhead for this particular work center. So now let's go and take a look at the materials part of our bill of materials. I will go back to the main bomb maintenance screen. And as I click on each of these operations, you will see the list of materials that are needed in the particular operational step in the lower section here. So you know the steps that you need to take to assemble the item, but importantly, these are the materials that we actually need to feed into our operational work centres to physically produce the finished goods. On the first operation, we need to use these materials. On the second operation, we don't need any materials. And then finally, when we come to package the finished item, we will need a box for it to go in. 
you can see here that we need one reservoir inlet, two circuit boards and so on. When we're defining the materials that we need to use, we can select different types. If I drill into the filter, you will see that this is a type of component part. These are purchased items that are going to go into the finished goods, so things like hinges, screws and bolts. Then if we go and look at the reservoir inlet, you will see that this is a subassembly. A subassembly is a different type of material that may have a bill of material in its own right. So if we look at the manufacturing tab, we will see that this has its own bomb reference number. These subassemblies roll into the parent item to create a multi-level bill of materials. In order to trigger production orders for subassemblies, you can either use MRP to plan the orders or you can auto create the linked orders from a production order with a multiple bill of material level. If I want to see this multi-level bomb in more of a visual format, I can open up the visual bomb inquiry. This form displays the entire multi-level bill of material for the bill and the revision. The left side of the form displays the bill and allows you to navigate through the levels. As you navigate, the record you selected is displayed in bold. When you select an operation, the right side of the form displays the subassembly bill details and the associated operation details. We can also look at this report format by selecting the multi-level report and then review the whole multi-level bomb from within here. Back to our main bill of materials now. In the lower section, we can define steps that we want to appear on the production ticket for the employees to reference. We can attach documents and files here so your employees can access any help information that they may need to complete the steps. Here we can also specify any tools that might be required to do the job. So we have a unit cost of 0 0.15. So for however many items on the production run, this value would be multiplied by the quantity produced. Then any other overheads that we may want to allocate the cost of towards building this item. Lastly, in this lower section, we have the outside processes tab. If for any stage of their operation, we need to send the materials to a supplier or subcontractor for processing outside of our business, we can specify the vendor and their location here. You will notice that against each of my operation lines, I'm able to check the option to backflush labour. The same goes for the material lines. I'm able to tick this option to backflush the materials. Backflushing means that you're essentially assuming that what you plan to do on your materials and labour is what you end up doing. So you are delaying the costing process until that operation has actually been completed. I've chosen to backflush labour and materials at the packaging stage. So I know that it's always going to take an employee 20 minutes to package the item. So rather than them have to go and enter the time in the system every time they package something, we can just flush that time automatically once the production order is completed. The same with the materials. We know that we are always going to be using a box for this operation and this is the cost. So rather than having to go and create a material transaction, Acumatica will automatically backflush the inventory at the completion of the operation or the production order. Other things that we can do on a bill of material can be accessed by this drop down that we have looked at previously. Copying a bill of materials is highly utilised. Just being able to copy a bill and paste it into a new one saves a lot of time with not having to duplicate the data entry. With the calculate bomb cost, you can take all of the data that has been entered on the bill, enter the lot size, and if you want to calculate just for this level or for the multi-level bill, and then roll it up into an easy to read summary. Set as default bomb, we'll then set this bill of materials to be the default configuration that would be used when we are producing the inventory item. A planning bomb is most often used to help forecast products that have many options where the final configuration is not determined until an order is actually received. An example is a manufacturer of desktop computers. They may have multiple product lines with hundreds of combinations of options for processors, memory, storage, monitors, etc. Some of the options may be available across multiple product lines. In order to compress the order to ship lead time, we need the components already in stock. Rather than attempting to forecast each product model for every variant, it may be more feasible to create a planning bill of material with the component options expressed in quantities forecast by their past usage. The next thing I want to talk about is the ability to add bill of material attributes. Custom attributes can be defined at the bill of material level or at the operational level. So you may want to add in an attribute for calibration, length, or something like signature of inspection. 
These types of attributes are often used for quality standards, checking and sign off. These could be checkboxes, text fields, etc. When they perform the work on that item, they will fill those fields in on the production order. Archive bomb, that would just save the bill of materials and then make it inactive. Create ECR stands for Create Engineering Change Request. We can use this to initiate changes in existing bill of materials. This allows us to track any pending changes to our bill of materials and to then send them for authorization based on our approval maps that we can set up in our bill of material preferences. So if I quickly just pop up our bill of material preferences, we can see here that there is an approval map specified for the ECR. And if we drill down on this, we can see that we have a simple approval map to say that all ECRs must be approved by Maxwell Baker. In my system, I have it set up so that an ECR once approved will then turn into an ECO, which is an engineering change order. This gives us another level of approval before the final changes are committed to the bill of materials. So back to our bill of materials then, I will go and create an ECR. And let's say that we've realized that we don't need this full hour for this stage of the operation, and we go and change this to be 55 minutes. I will also go and say that we need two reservoir inlets instead of one. I can then save this and send it for approval. This would be routed according to the approval map rules that we saw in the preferences form, but in my case, as I'm logged in as administrator, I can actually go and approve it from here. We will then get the option to create the engineering change order. So I will create that. It can be reviewed and then sent off for the final approval. Once this has been done, we can then finally commit the changes to the bomb. You will see that it has given this another revision ID. So once we save this and make it active, we will then have two versions of this bill of material in the system, just with different revision IDs. I then choose to make the new revision the default bomb if I want and have it update the inventory item default. I can also go and compare it to the old bomb by using the compare bomb function. On the left hand side, we have our newly revised bomb. And if I then go and select the previous revision on the right side, you can see it will highlight any differences between the two in the lower panels. We can see that there was one inlet in this revision and then two inlets in the newer revision. So that concludes our introduction to the Acumatica Bill of Materials module. For a more in-depth tailored demonstration or for more information, please contact us on the phone number or the email address on the screen. Many thanks for watching.